very good eve very good evening to all of you welcome to this uh, introductory talk on uh, leadership 4.0 thank you for spending this time and uh, uh, trying to recover i mean discover something about how leadership 4.0 can contribute towards a green and sustainable world so my name is ramesh victor i am a trainer and a consultant giving operational improvement and different kinds of uh, organizational effectiveness services throughout malaysia and also some parts of uh, europe whole of asia and a little bit of us so i have been also been involved in uh, uh, green initiatives especially in factories where used we we use methodologies such as making them reduce seven lean green waste they call it okay so uh, i am also passionate about how leadership can lead towards a green earth and a sustainable earth so i would like to share a little bit uh, with you all uh, how this thing can help us to uh, actually uh, go into a sustainable earth and uh, move our earth to become usable and also valuable not only for us but for our future generations so this is a very introductory session a talk which discovers how leadership plays a role in le leading towards a sustainable world towards green and sustainability okay so let me just start off see uh, there is this uh, former prime minister of norway she once said sustainable development is that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so whenever we talk about sustainability whenever we talk about green whenever we talk about the environment we are in fact not only talking about ourselves we are talking about the future because the earth as we have it today is a gift for us and a gift to us by our previous generations they took care of it or maybe they failed to take care of it so whatever we have today is something which was handed down to us and now the responsibility comes back to us what is it that are we going to hand over to our future generation now i decided to put this particular quotation from a leader a nation's leader in order to uh, show the point that when we talk about green when we talk about sustainability it is always a role of leaders we are all leaders we are all leaders in our own way and we also have organizational leaders we have country leaders we have national leaders but somehow each one of us plays some kind of a leadership role in our day to day life and even in our work life or wherever we are but leadership role is very critical in guiding us towards a green earth as well now leadership has developed a lot as you may all may know uh, some of us who are working working uh, life for many years we would have seen how people have been transiting from one type of leadership to another type of leadership as we know it today so we have a different type of leaders today compared to what we had in the earlier years and as time goes by even this leadership behavioral pattern leadership uh, abilities and leadership knowledge is also changing and what exactly is influencing this leadership change as you all may be aware even the industry the world has been evolving over time today we are sitting in a world which calls itself as going as uh, having gone through or is going through a revolution we call this as the fourth industrial revolution we have already gone through four industrial revolutions worldwide and facing all these revolutions there is also a revolution a change and a development of leadership so in my today's talk my topic is about what is leadership 4.0 and how leadership 4.0 can affect and should affect and should have a positive impact on a green earth sustainable earth green technology and the environment which is friendly to us and friendly to the future and our children as you may know we are uh, we are all aware of the global warming which has been going on uh, as a talk as a uh, thought process and as a reality in our own lives 
how if how effective are the actions of our leaders going to be in order to further uh, not allow this global warming to deteriorate we'll discuss all this now first of all when we talk about the environment let me just in briefly cover about the environment and what is happening to the world uh, very briefly before i go into this topic of leadership 4.0 and industry 4.0 and how it affects the growth of people as a people who are willing to be sustainable first of all we all know about carbon footprint what is carbon footprint carbon footprint is basically the amount of greenhouse gases which are coming out of the so many kinds of emissions which we have in our day-to-day -day life now this picture is put there not just to show us that carbon dioxide or any kind of emission is there but to stir our mind why is it there why is it that we have come to a world where there is so much of carbon footprint and so much of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or all sorts of emissions which is affecting our breathing affecting the environment and in fact has gone towards a greenhouse effect which has affected the entire environment itself now my take here is it is beyond just emissions from buildings and cars it is beyond the way we drive our cars the way we build our buildings it is beyond the way we manage industries it all boils down to human need and how we fulfill this human need and in fulfilling this human need leadership plays a very important role when i say leadership i'm talking about leaders of organizations leaders of nations leaders of companies leaders who are actually leading innovation leaders of technology everyone who is somehow making a decision how am i going to lead the people around me for the near future and the far future and somehow these decisions which have been made by leaders have led to a world which is much better easier than about 100 years ago or maybe even 200 years ago or maybe even just 20 years ago but at the same time it has also brought about a lot of harm what harm has it brought about now these are some of the things which we need to think about think very carefully and reflect how leadership has actually made decisions which has affected our world and globe at large the sustainable leadership does not compromise the future by expanding and accelerating too quickly in the present now what does this mean now bottom line when when i said that leadership has made decisions in order to uh, drive the people around them towards a certain end one of the kind of decisions they have been making is also how we live our life how we make our organization survive in the near future for some reason the revolution which has been taking place in the industry the revolution which has been taking place in the economy has affected this decision making everyone makes decisions as long as it is profiting them economically people make decisions to make sure that they're economically sound people make decisions to make sure that life becomes easier and out of this easy life we make profit we become happier and we have a survival here on earth so then survival then gets a inverted commerce meaning because survival is all about ourselves now do we think about the future when we talk about survival do we think about the environment when we talk about survival do we talk uh, think about the uh, uh, great grandchildren of ours or maybe a uh, uh, few thousand years ahead how are they going to survive because we don't think about them we are progressing at a stage we are progressing at a speed which is too fast and too quick you know there's this saying uh, that you may have uh, heard this saying innovation at the speed of light or progress at the speed of light everybody wants to progress at the speed of light why because there is a demand for progress everybody wants a faster running handphone 
everybody wants a better looking TV. Everybody wants a faster running car, but with better fuel uh, consumption. Because of this need, which is has to be met on a very fast pace, sometimes we overstep the limits and go beyond. We tend to do things which just don't meet our needs, but go beyond our needs. And that's where the harm has come. Now, what is this? It is somehow a leadership decision. We all know that these things have somehow affected the greenhouse effect. We, we, we are aware that naturally there's a greenhouse effect. But today, because of these decisions by leaders, which has made the world different, our human enhanced greenhouse effect is making the entire earth warmer. Now, this is a phenomena and this is a reality, some claim. Some claim this is not a reality, it is a hoax, okay? But we can feel it in our lives, the heat, the, the warming, the change in climate. But today, my, my input is not just on the greenhouse effect. It's not just on the warming of our climate, but more on how we make decisions and more on how our decisions are affecting the future, how our decisions is uh, molding the world in a certain way where whether we are aware of it or we are not aware of it, I'm not too sure. Okay, But somehow it is molding the future in a way. So this is the time for us to rethink about leadership. Leadership is the one which makes decisions. So sustainable leadership does not compromise the future and it does not accelerate so how should leadership be? You see, because of the greenhouse effect, every part of our life has been affected. You know, Earth absorbs more energy, habitat loss, shifting you know, by ranges and migration, stronger storms. Now, all these things, all these things has even made the world economically imbalanced. We have parts of the world which is going through famine, nothing grows, people are starving, and we have other parts of the world where progress has become too fast to the extent that there is environmental exits, environmental vaporization, all sorts of things. Imbalance has taken place. Again, why? Why do we still have a third world in 2021 after so many millions of years of progress? Why has the world stopped progressing in some parts of the world? And why is the world continuing to progress too fast in some parts of the world? That is the thought process I would like you all to think about and ask ourselves why. Now, my take is somehow this leadership decision making, leadership progress, leadership thought process is involved in a revolution and this revolution is closely connected to the industrial revolution. Now, very briefly, let me run through what has taken place right from the 1800s until today. We have four industrial revolutions. Before that, you know, most of, most of uh, mankind were, were probably were, were, were farmers and uh, were living in a very green earth. And uh, they were very, very connected in an environmental manner. But somehow man wanted to progress, wanted to be faster, wanted to be more effective and wanted to be more productive. So the first industrial revolution took place when machines started to be made, steam engines, machines. So when mechanical introduction started to be made, people became more in need of leaders who were able to manage this industrial revolution with machine and not with people. See, when we are dealing with people, our heart is tuned to people. Our heart is tuned to the needs of the people. When someone needs food, I'm thinking of how to give the person food. When someone needs a clothing, I'm thinking of how, the, how I can give the person clothing as a service. But now when we are dealing with machines, leadership is talking about how do I manage machines? So the first leadership revolution also took place and a transition, a transformation took place in leadership. It became less human to a certain extent, maybe not to a big extent, less human, more machine focus. Machine focus means people who are muscular. You know, in the 1800s, even if you want to become a manager in a company, 
you need to be muscular you know this was reality in the, in the world in the economic world and it was a very male dominant world why it is like a machine world you know there was this talk by charles chaplin in one of the movies you can do youtube it and you can find out a machine world and a machine man so this is what leadership had been driving people in the first industrial revolution to think and behave like machines when you think and behave like machines there is no consideration for sustainability there is no consideration for heart there is consideration for productivity now the second industrial revolution is not a new revolution it actually is an extension of the first revolution which made the first revolution more productive machines were made to make mass production when machines were made to make mass production what do you think would have happened to leadership leadership had to run at a faster rate to deal with machines in a faster rate they are not going back to humans but they are going at a faster rate in trying to deal with machines so much so that we had the scientific thinking leaders at the time people who were all the while thinking about productivity all the while thinking about making more making more with the existing resources you know we we had the automotive industry in us ford motors they say he, he was the father of the second industrial revolution something was said at that time you know they they made they made thousands and thousands of cars in one factory therefore started the industrial revolution where mass production large volume manufacturing and different different kinds of industrial uh, exposure to different different technology started taking place so leadership was thinking about technology about machine about productivity then the third revolution came why the third revolution wanted to improve on the first and the second yes we have machines but somehow these machines are not good enough for us because we are living in a global world the machines are not able to connect with each other fast enough so the leaders somehow pushed forward science and came out with the third industrial revolution which was the information technology the world of internets you no know, the world wide web was started you no know, and that was a big breakthrough now what did this world wide web did do basically it was helping the first and the second industrial revolution to run at a faster rate now when these things happen leadership is thinking now in running at a faster rate to make their machines not only make more parts but make it globally still nobody is thinking about the human being yes people are selling to human every product that is made is sold to human beings but nobody is thinking about the human being as a society as a group of people who are going to be here for another million and million and million and million years in the future they are just thinking as a group of people existing now and finally we are in the fourth industrial revolution the fourth industrial revolution is not just the beginning of the digital age but it is also called as the cyber physical systems where man has finally found how can i join combine data information technology and machines you know today if we have a, a, a mobile phone if there's a sim card in it anyone with the right technology can find out where we are where we have bought anything where we have eaten everything can be found out how is it possible the handphone which we have which is a machine is connected to the internet and data is used using fourth industrial revolution methodologies and data is translated for business use so friends what i'm trying to say in all this is leadership focus through the first second third and fourth industrial revolution is all about profit success and growth in industry no if that is a focus you know there's no company will hire someone who who doesn't want to make profit for the organization no organization will hire someone who is going to bring loss for the company or growth for the company everybody needs to grow and it is not wrong to make profit not wrong to be successful not wrong to grow 
And it is because of this thinking that we have had, had the so many kinds of beautiful technological things that is helping us today. You know, our transportation system, our aerospace system, all sorts of things are helping us. But my point is leadership has gone too fast to the extent that we have ceased to think about the earth, the environment, and people as an ongoing progress, not just a set of group of 7 billion people living in the now. It is also the past and it is also the future. And this home, our earth, and our society has to go on, has to progress. Society has to progress. And the progress of society has to be defined. Now, it is in this context, I would like to bring forth some things which has happened because of the fourth industrial revolution. You know, what is this? This is a picture of an automotive company who has made so many cars parked in their fields and not being able to sell those cars. Why do they make it? Because they want to make and make and make and make and make and make. They want to make and make and make and make and they cannot sell. And eventually what happens if they really cannot sell these cars, they will just crush it. They will just crush it and throw it away. Okay. Now that is one bad thing. But to make these cars, which even could not be sold, they had to take the metal from the earth. They had to take all the different raw materials from the earth. They had to use energy to make it. And so much has been wasted and it has not even been consumed. Why? We do not know. Because the focus of leadership is make profit now. Our machines have to run. Our machines have to produce. We have to build more factories. We have to make more products. Okay, But somehow it has worked to be counterintuitive. What has happened is this kind of an attitude has not helped them to make profit. In fact, it has helped them to close down many large companies because the thought process was going at too fast a speed. What has happened is about 30, 40 years ago, about 30, 40 years ago, or maybe slightly more, slightly longer, a lifespan of a large company, a lifespan of a large company, it survives for about 40 to 50 years, 40 to 50 years. Any company which survives more than 40 to 50 years, they are a legendary company already. Okay? This had been the normal average trend worldwide. Okay? But as of lately, in the last five to 10 years, the lifespan of a large successful company is only 15 years. Why? Because leadership has taken the organizations too fast to the extent that they have overproduced, they have destroyed so many things and they couldn't survive. Now they are in a dilemma. They do not know what to do. Here's another picture. You may be able to relate yourself to this around you know, wherever you are living, you go to KL, you go to Penang, you go to anywhere, you see more and more and more and more and more buildings coming up. You can see that in Johor Bahru, in uh, uh, KL City, in uh, Selango, in Penang, in Ipoh, okay, more and more buildings coming out. But if you stand there after a few months, most of these buildings with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rooms or houses only have about 10, 20 lights inside it. Why? They are not occupied. We are building more and more white elephants. Again, why? Overproduction. Again, why overproduction? Because we are speeding too much to make profit. We are not thinking of the use of the human being. So much so, in order to make these buildings, you should have taken so much of cement from the earth, so much of material from the earth. Maybe sometimes we use wood. We cut so much, so much of deforestation brings us to the deforestation thing, uh, which is also taking place in big parts everywhere, in Malaysia, everywhere. More and more of the forest is cut. Okay, More and more of the forest is cut. In the Amazon, the place looks totally different. Even here in Malaysia, in East Malaysia, the, 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 the whole uh, place there is looking different. Even here in West Malaysia, deforestation is taking place. Why do we really have this need? Yes, we have a need for logging. Yes, we have a need for buildings. Yes, we have a need for cars. But somehow, leadership thought process had not been responsible in thinking, are we making the right quantity of anything and selling, or we are just making without thinking. Now, that has led to a 
total destruction of our environmental system. Look at this. Now, this scene is very common in any big city. So what can anyone walk beside these cars? I wonder what will happen to uh, you know, asthmatic patients if they walk bes uh, beside these cars. Why? You know, every, every person, every home nowadays have about three or four cars. Why is it so? No, you, you, you don't even walk to a, a supermarket, which is about uh, uh, 10 minutes stone throw away from our house. We take the car and we move. Why? Because the industry is giving it to us, has made it easy for us to buy, made it easy for us to use, has made the expectation high. Now, this mobile phone, before this mobile phone came, all of us had a telephone in the house. So if you are not in the house, they cannot contact you. But because this mobile phone was introduced into the world by industries, now they have set a new expectation on you and me. I should be contactable 24 hours a day. People should call me 24 hours a day. Now, do you want to be contacted 24 hours a day? In all these things, the point I'm trying to put forward is leadership is shaping industries. Leadership is shaping human behavior. Leadership is shaping the outcome of the world without giving consideration to the speed at which life progresses and without giving consideration to the future, which is a thousand years away, a million years away from us, our grandchildren. How are they going to live? Are, they, are we going to live an earth where it's going to be uninhabitable, no? like Pluto or whatever it is? Or what kind of a world are we going to live? You know, there, there are people now telling that the, the exploration to Mars is taking place so much because they are finding an alternative place to live if Earth becomes unlivable. Now, that has been the thought process of leadership. Okay, I spoil this Earth, I go to another Earth. Now, whether that's true or not, we do not know. Or is it just scientific pursuit? We do not know. We do not care. Our topic here is, what does leadership think? So, what does happen? The whole Earth has become like a garbage. Can we go on any longer like this? Can we turn this earth to be something like this forever? We cannot. See, there are three principles of sustainability. When you don't look at these three principles in, of sustainability in one go, leadership thought process will always be broken like that. Leadership will always think profit only. Yes, the economy part of it is important. That's where the profit sits. There's Society part of it is another uh, important element in this uh, world. And the third is environment. When you hit any one of this, the economy will be affected and the other will be affected. If you only look at environment and if you don't look at economy and you don't look at society, maybe a thousand years from now, only trees will be here and animals will be here. Maybe we would have disappeared okay? and no economies will be there. But if we only look at society and don't look at environment and don't look at economy, I believe all of us will be going back to the jungles and living on trees. But if we only look at economy, then what will happen is the world as it is today, running at so fast a speed, so much so that it is not thinking about society and environment. But the good news is people have started to realize this. See, every year, there is this World Economic Forum gathering, which takes place in Davos, the city of Davos in Europe, where they discuss how industries should progress the year forward and the 10 years forward. And this is a very regular uh, uh, forum which takes place. In this forum, all the major corporations of the world take part. Their leaders are there, like Microsoft and this and that. Those who are making decisions for the economic world, they are there. For the first time, over the last few gatherings, they have started to look at the environment. They have started to look at the world. They have started to look at economy, not just from a business standpoint, but from these three angles. So the last Davos gathering was in 2020, last year. Okay, last year. And they came out with a decision. They say this carbon footprint thing is one metric and one measure which can tell us whether we are going too fast in industry or not. Just one measure. There are many measures, but this is one good indication. 
If we can see the carbon footprint going down, then we can say that leadership is thinking in a new way to the extent that we are starting to consider society, we are starting to consider environment. So they have come out with a target. Now targets are targets. Now the leaders will have to make a decision whether they're going to execute this target or not. That by 2050, by 2050, there has to be zero carbon emission in Europe. Okay, they want to start with Europe. Now why? Because when there is zero carbon emission, you will reach a temperature of 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is compatible to a safe earth. Okay, so if they don't meet this, if they don't meet this, see, the current trajectory just shows that the temperature and the carbon footprint is going to increase and not going to decrease. Okay, so will we be able to make this? It depends on leaders. It depends on the people who are running corporations. It depends on the people who are running organizations. It depends on the people who are running businesses. It depends on the people who are running states, nations, everywhere. Leaders, leaders make the decision. That is why they also came out with leadership principles in this Davos uh, 2020 uh, convention. So they said that in order to keep the global temperature increased to 1.5 degrees or below, we need to reshape leaders who are able to look at environment, economy and society, all three together. Now, this is a bold move. This is a giant move because for the first time, people who, are, who were only interested in profit have come together and started thinking about the reshaping leadership thought process, which will look at all three areas. So they came out, they, uh, they hired one of the world's largest consulting firm called Accenture to do extensive study worldwide, to bring about reports to them. And collating these reports, they came about with five leadership principles, which they called as responsible leadership. And many claim that this is what we call as leadership 4.0, which is compatible not only to lead in the IT and the technology-based world, but also to the lead the world to make it sustainable. Now, what are these leadership 4.0 principles? There are five of them as put forward by Accenture Research and then was discussed and accepted by the Davos uh, Convention in 2020. Now, there are five. I may not have the time to go into each one of these at length, but I want to give you an overview and how each one of these thought process can prepare leaders to make a greener earth and a more sustainable earth. The first thing they put there as formulas, they call it at stakeholder inclusion. Stakeholder inclusion means if I am a leader, who do I deal with? Who are the people who I am responsible for? For all this while, leaders thought that they were responsible to their company. They were responsible for the business. They were responsible to their bosses. They were responsible to their customers. But now it says that the stakeholders should be very inclusive. It should be accountable and it should be trustable, and it should give an impact. Now, this is where we include accountability and trust towards sustainability as part of leadership thought process, not just business, not just business. Huh? We are also talking about accountability and sustainability for the environment. That's where the first principle is now starting to be inclusive of the environment and sustainability. Now, the second one, I told you that the first, second and third uh, industrial revolution was going more and more and more towards machines, people who are technologically advanced. If you're a quantum physicist, if you're an engineer, you will uh, grow very well in an organization. Now, if you say that you are someone who, are, who is calm, who is able to deal with people, then you will just be sitting in whatever position you are. That was the thought process earlier. But today they say leadership must have emotion and intuition into themselves. Now, when we talk about emotion and intuition, that's where green and sustainability comes in. What is our emotion and what is 
our intuition about the earth do we have an emotion about the earth or not do we empathize on our children or not do we empathize on our grandchildren or not now these are questions which leaders are asking now they're not just talking about money alone they are talking about responsible leadership the third thing which came about in davos was mission and purpose now what was the mission there was a common mission in the first four industrial revolution the common mission for any organization was profit here now they have included a carbon zero mission as part of organizational mission they're talking about cities which will be carbon free they're talking about factories which will be carbon free i have been to one factory in japan it's a toyota factory which is known to be the world's most environmental factory not even a single bulb is seen in many of many parts of this factory and they are making cars you know every kind of energy in this factory is either recyclable or it is biodiversible so it's fantastic you know it's possible it's possible but do leaders want to lead through this do we have a mission do we have a mission other than selling but also to save the earth and be responsible the fourth leadership principle they talk about technology now this is where we say that there is so much of overproduction so much of technology which is not needed being thrown into us even when we don't need it but today they are telling don't innovate at the speed of light but rather innovate at the speed of life there's a difference between light and life life moves at its own speed and light is much faster than life okay so we cannot move beyond the speed of life if a certain innovation doesn't suit the life of the people for now and doesn't suit the people for the future then we should not invent it now we ask our question the electric car was possible about 50 60 years ago but why did man decide to go for engines with fuel because for them it was fast they wanted it to be developed and sold to the people fast enough so much so that man themselves killed the electric car 50 60 years ago even longer than maybe about 100 years ago they killed the electric car now what other technologies will we kill just because we want to make a quick profit and what other kind of innovation we will make because we want to make a profit and just put it into the market today the davos 2020 leadership principle is telling innovate with responsibility the key word there is responsible innovation if you want to innovate something it should not only benefit the business it should benefit society it should benefit the environment and it should protect the environment and the last one intellect and insight you know we are very good in growing in intellect our universities our learning system other the speed at which we can get information is so fast and so efficient you google you can learn something new very fast but today we are at the age of the fourth industrial revolution where data is we are talking about big data we are talking about analytics we are talking about improving our lifestyle using these analytics and data now the question is are we going to use this data speed analytic speed to reduce carbon reduce green wastes they say there are seven types of green waste energy water materials garbage transportation emissions biodiversity now do we use big data to improve and reduce all this how can we come out with a recyclable energy very few people in the world do it very few concerned scientists do it now they are telling that it is supposed to be the responsibility of every leader in the world that is what this davos 2020 the five responsible leadership is trying to tell us now this is like a dream this is like a dream but where do we start now we are all leaders in some way we have our young who are in the universities we have our children in the schools we have our youths who have just come out of the universities ready to start their work. Now, are they aware of all these things? To what extent our education system, our schools, our universities 
even teach them about these leadership principles. Yes, they will teach them leadership models. How frequently do you come across a young person who comes out of a university or a young person who comes out of college or even comes out of school is thinking responsibility of not only themselves, but of society, environment, and economy. So we have to create a compass for green and sustainability for our young. That is the, the, the move. That is a move. That is a move. Every university, every college has to do that. The awareness has to come. We have to set a compass that we are heading towards responsible leadership. We need to be informed. We need to be informed about the direction of the world, the industrial revolution, the leadership revolution, how decisions change the world. Everyone needs to be informed of that so that the young who are more energetic and dynamic than us will be able to lead with a purpose rather than lead only with profit and self-interest. Next, we need to create leaders who are being responsible. How can we start? There are things which we can start immediately. We can teach our young, we can teach ourselves, we can teach people in school, we can teach people in universities to immediately look at the seven types of waste which we have all around us, even in our house. Why? When we start thinking of this, we are practicing leadership. And when we start acting on this, we are actually becoming responsible leaders that will train us to be like responsible leaders. And that will help us to be empathizing with society around us. The unit society could be our family, our neighborhood, our taman could be somewhere, our school, okay? Energy. Do we go at extreme lengths wherever we are to consider saving energy? Do we innovate on our own to consider save energy, water consumption? Do we save water? You know, there's this material world, we call it as a overconsumption world. We buy, we buy, we buy, we buy, because they sell, they sell, they sell, they sell. When the buying stops, the selling stops. When the buying of unnecessary things stops, the selling of unnecessary things will stop. And the selling and the buying of necessary things will increase. So we need to be careful. So, so we can do that. You know, how we deal with our garbage. Here in Malaysia, in every taman, you can see garbage thrown everywhere. You know, then people need to do Kotong Royong once in two, three years. Okay, so this is how life goes by. Garbage can be thrown everywhere. Garbage is there because we have been irresponsible with material. We have been irresponsible with decisions. Transportation, you know, the way we move, the way we get from one place to another. Maybe this COVID-19 has taught us a big lesson, but slowly we are moving away from the lesson it taught us. The fact that we are talking now virtually has stopped so many cars moving to one location and listening to me talking. You know, we are basically using industry 4.0 machine internet connectivity to bring about a message across. So that reduces emission, you know, and biodiversity is another thing. How can we come out with a recyclable world where everything is recycled and back to something which sustains the earth. No, are we ready to develop young leaders towards becoming responsible? So friends, this is my presentation today. Now it was a teaser. It was a teaser to make us think where leadership has been coming all this while, where we are now and where leadership is heading. Okay. So in future, if we have the opportunity, I would like to enter into each one of these five principles, how it can really be uh, helping us to transform ourselves into green technology and more than green technology, an uh, earth where people are more responsible with each other and for the future. So thank you very much. I now open up if any one of you have any questions or any comments to make, you may. So I open it up. Anyone have any questions right now? Any question? Either you can uh, put in the chat box or you can uh, unmi uh, un unmute your mic and ask uh, Mr. Ramesh.
Okay, so I think that's uh, can elaborate on creation of compass. Okay, so someone has asked uh, uh, on the creation of yeah. compass. You see, when we talk, I'll go back to that particular slide so that I can relate it with you. Now we are talking about uh, creating a compass. Where was I? Yeah, I think in this. See, when we talk about creating a compass, basically we are talking about setting a direction for ourselves. It is based on this. You know, here we are talking about mission and purpose. This number third element, this is what I took and put it here as creating a compass. Now we as young people, or maybe we are here as middle-aged people, or maybe even a senior citizen, what is our compass in life as leaders? Now, we all have a compass, a direction to go, you know. Now, where are we heading? Do we have green as part of the agenda in this compass? Do we have responsibility as part of this compass in our life? We are all very good in making, you know, mission statements for our companies. We are also good in making goals at the beginning of the year, saying that I want to achieve this at the end of 2021. I want to recover from the COVID-19 from 2021. Okay. But then... Do we include green as part of our compass or not? A compass is just showing a direction. Huh? The direction may be telling this is the north, but in this is the north is green part of it. When it is not part of it, our comp compass is showing us towards south maybe, showing us towards a different direction maybe. See, so that was what I meant by creating a compass. Hope that uh, answered your question. What would you see as north for sustainability? North for sustainability is where I see the three elements working together, where we are in a world which is progressing, which has to continue to progress, which has to come out with technologies which are continuing to make our life easier, connect us better, but at the same time, does not harm values of society. When I say does not harm values of society, we are not making products and machines and whatever that is that we sell to people, the way we do business, that disintegrates society to such an extent that we are affecting the bondage of one people to another as it has become in the current world. We have seen wars, we have seen famine, we have seen progress countries, we have seen countries which are economically so bad. We have seen countries with political imbalance. All comes back to a society which is very, very economy driven. The economically strong suppress the economically weak. So a society with leaders should be responsible to make sure that we are in a balanced world. Uh, that's a true north. While doing both this, while doing both this, we should make sure that we are not harming the earth we are living in. Now, when all these three things meet, we are at the center point called sustainability. We are sustaining our economy, we are sustaining our society, and we are sustaining the earth. So that is what we are talking about. So you have, you have written there, human values tie everything together. You mean, yes, you are right. Human values tie everything together, but we are also now talking about business values, policy values, government values all these values are what we call as leadership driven values now, human values are nat natural to us huh? probably our parents gave it our religion gave it but when society is facing a uh, industry facing a nation facing organizations facing workplace which has conflicting values then it becomes very very difficult that is where our north should be where we should create a leadership who is able to uh, you know, not only uphold human values, but create organizational values which will be coherent with all these things. I hope that gave you uh, an answer. Any other questions, please? So there's uh, another one more question also. The last one, human value, it's everything together. Yeah, that's the one. So human values tie everything together. That's the one I mentioned just now. 
So human values, not only human values, it also has to be organizational, it has to be industrial, it has to be, you know, national values, which are, you know, tying in together with human values. So uh, that's where we are telling that leaders have a role to reshape all this so that they are, in, you know, they are, they are uh, merging with the right human values so that all these three things can meet together. Love, peace, non-violence, right conduct may be uh, an outcome when we keep certain values. No, the certain values may be, let me just put forward certain values which are you know, dealing with all these three things. Empathy, one is empathy. Now, if I, as a human being, do I empathize with the world around me? When I empathize with the world around me, I include the environment around me. Now, if I am a corporate business, do I empathize with people to ensure that whatever I'm making is not going to, you know, disintegrate society in the future. Empathy is a kind of value which can bring all this together. When that empathy happens, of course, you will have right conduct. You're right. Right conduct will be there. The other thing is peace. Now, when, if, when we are too economy focused, what we can have is uh, imbalance around the world, as I mentioned where you have poverty in some places of the world and we have totally destroyed the environment to the extent that those places are not even able to have proper food and proper biodiversified lifestyles. So they are suffering. So when you have a balance because of proper economic and proper political decisions, you will have peace, of course, and you will also have non-violence. And when all this happens, somehow love is there. Somehow love is there. So all these words are right, but beyond that is the kind of things which leaders have to think. Empathy, respect, inclusiveness. Okay. Now, these are the kind of values I'm trying to tell, uh, tell about when I'm talking about leadership values. Uh, I think uh, that's so far that's all. The, yeah. The question. So, uh, if uh, there's no other question, I thank you very much for your participation. I hope you uh, obtain some some knowledge of value uh, yes. uh, for yourself, and uh, uh, probably we'll have more uh, such talks in the future. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. very fruitful, uh, knowledgeable uh, session as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you everyone, Dredden. Thank you.